Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another weekly dose of another Homebridge plugin installation with me Tech with Daddy. Last week we did install the virtual weather station plugin just using two values which were the API key as well as the location. Setting up uh, the entire plugin was very quick and we could see some data being reported in the Apple Home app and if you wanted any details we could go through the Eve Home app and see all of the details. If you didn't watch this video, I've got the link uh, down below as well. In today's video, we'll talk about enabling the Plex plugin in Homebridge and also running some automation when there is an occupancy detected within a given period of time. Now remember, the Plex plugin works as a sensor, as an occupancy sensor. If it detects something, it triggers. If it doesn't detect something, it doesn't trigger any of your smart devices. Now, to have this plugin up and running, obviously you will need to have the Plex Media Server running on one of your computers or your network attached storage. Two, you will need to have Homebridge installed. Three, you will need to have some smart devices like speakers or lights. Four, you'll need some streaming device to access all of your media content. Five, you need a hub to, uh, so that the Apple Home app can talk to this hub and have some of the automation running. Now, since we are, we are within the Apple ecosystem, there are three kinds of hub, your iPad, your Apple TV, or the HomePod. Now, in my case, how do I have this plugin uh, set up? My Plex Media Server and Homebridge is installed and running in my Synology NAS 218 Plus. My smart devices are my NanoLeaf uh, panels. I've got my Bose SoundTouch 300 also enabled in Homebridge as well as the cheap Sonoff uh, Zigbee device enabled through the smart things and have and uh, integrated with Homebridge. Um, my streaming device as well as my hub is the Apple TV that I'm using uh, to, have some, to have two of my automations uh, running. Now what are we going to go through? First we're going to go and have the, the plugin installed using three values which is the token, the user as well as the media player. Once that's done uh, we will also create two automation rules when an occupancy is detected and not detected. And uh, four, uh, we'll, I will show a clear demo uh, of how this entire uh, plugin works. And thankfully, uh, in this specific video, I've got my four year old also helping me. Uh, uh, it, it's a good, fantastic partnership with all the quarantine that we're going through. So uh, he's going to help me in, in the demo as well. So let's not waste time and jump into the uh, installation. To start, all you got to do is uh, get into the uh, Homebridge uh, landing page uh, and with that we, we will need our username and password. Once you get in, normally you should see your, uh, uh, your status uh, page like this, but just in case you log out in any, any other tabs, it will go to that tab. So uh, one of the things I had forgotten in my previous video was how to add in accessories onto your status web page. To do that is very simple. Go to your accessories, highlight any one of them and you will see this configurator uh, icon. Click on it and here you can do three things. One, you can update its name, hide it or show in dashboard widget. So let's click on show in dashboard widget and you will see that if you go to your status uh, tab, you can see the humidity was just added. To remove it, just click on it and not show in dashboard widget. Another thing you can do is you can also arrange it. You can arrange the height width of the uh, widget. So in this case, that's what I did. You can also add, add widget, memory, system information, and also uh, lock it down. So in this case, it's locked down. So uh, the theme of the video is to add in uh, Plex plugin. So let's do that. We will select this first one over here. At least for me, it works perfectly. Uh, let's click on the NPM and see how the what is required to install it. And uh, let's install this in the background. Now, number one, uh, Plex plugin is a sensor. So it works as a sensor in Homebridge and uh, it will be added in the accessories uh, section of the config.json uh, file. So 
uh, here are the uh, state here are the statements that needs to be added under the accessory section and there are three values to be included that is the plex token your username as well as the player that you're streaming the media let's copy this information go into home bridge and there it is installed now one of the things you have noticed that it doesn't have the settings section so you cannot update the information through the user interface in this case we will need to go to the config section and add in the s under the accessory section accessory section the information so always when you add in a new accessory into the config dot uh, json file don't forget don't forget to add in a comma let's paste it so uh, we've pasted the information and uh, now we will need to add in the token the username and the player so to do that uh, we need to get into the plex server in my case in my Synology server, I am not running Plex as a server. I am running it off my uh, as a Docker. So it's a container running through my port container. And uh, let's access the Plex uh, service through the IP address that's already been assigned. So in this case is 192.168 and the port using 32400 now I've got a couple of movies on my Synology hard drive and to get all of the information we need to go to the dashboard section and click on to the uh, any of the movies that is streaming currently so the good thing is let a movie be streaming so in this case uh, right off the section you can grab the username which is right over here you can do that over here or you can go into your icon and select it so let's copy this value go to home bridge and paste it over here and now the player right so we need to see what player we're going to be using so let's go back to plex show details and and this is the player that you need to copy okay now this may vary from player to player let's update it correctly all right now if you're playing off your uh, uh, web page you can select any movie hit play go to your dashboard you see that the player information is updated so in this case if I want to trigger my Plex plugin using my web pages this is the player that I can copy and paste into the player section but let's leave it on to as leave it to my Apple TV that I play uh, most of the time so we've added in the uh, username and player now we need to add in the token very easy all you got to do is click on any movie in this case uh, we have this one running get info and we got to go to this section and click on view dot view xml now when you view xml uh, we will be directed to a new web page and all you got to do is go to the search to the search bar and move all the way to the end and you need to get this value over your plex token so let's copy this control c go to my home bridge and paste the value over here okay so we look everything looks good in this case uh, we have the plex token we got the user we've got the player so let's save and let's restart the home bridge home bridge is has restarted let's go to the accessory section and there you are we've got uh, the plex sensor over here already enabled and uh, it's triggered because currently I'm playing a movie uh, on my Apple TV 
So let's do one thing. First thing, leave it as it is the name. Let's add it into our dashboard widget. So there you are. Uh, so in Homebridge is already enabled. Let's jump over to the Home app and uh, let's uh, do two things. We're going to we're going to uh, create two automation rules, okay? And uh, later we will uh, see how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Home app. Here it is. It's showing us triggered. I'm going to click on it. Settings and uh, I'm going to add it to my sensor section as always that's about it so uh, if you go to rooms and on to my sensor section it's triggered as played since I'm playing the movie through my web page I need to update the value over here through my web page so in this case Flex dashboard and click on this copy paste save and restart. If I were to play my movie right now, you see it has been uh, triggered. So if I stop, it stops over there. So um, from here, let's open up the automation tab and let's create two automations. In this case, is the first automation when the movie is started during a set period of time. So in this case, I will select flex next time at night next I'm going to select my movie scene next and done so this is when the occupancy is, is detected let's create one more when occupancy is not detected this next stop detecting occupancy time at night next I'm going to select my northern lights and I'm going to select my lampshade to come on in this case on and done so what we've done is we've created two automation rules when occupancy is detected that is when the movie starts playing lights will turn off and just my nano leaf panels will be on and when occupancy is not detected when you pause the movie or stop the movie my nano leaf panels will change to another scene and plus the lampshade will come on let's go back to home so this is how you configure the plex service uh, with your home bridge and uh, home app creating two automation rules and uh, let's see a demonstration uh, on how this really works with all of this configuration done. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. One, two, three, go. Hi guys, so now we're going to test the Plex plugin. And to assist me is my four-year-old son, Mr. Liam. Hi, Liam. Hi, guys. Okay, and now we're going to test the scene. So you see, when you press pause, the lights come back on. Liam, yeah, can you press again? Play. See? When we turn on, the lights come out. And when we pause, comes again. So there you go. With the plugin installation, as well as the two automation rules, we were able to get that rich uh, viewing experience. And, and that's how and that's how we see all of our Plex movies 
uh, with my family. And also not forgetting to thank my four-year-old Mr. Liam for the uh, assistance in getting that demo uh, working perfectly. So what are we going to come up with next week? Next week, we're going to have the Google Smart Home uh, integration with HomeBridge. Um, I use the Google, Google Home Hub. Don't ask me why, but I have it as a cross-platform uh, enabled in my house. We will go to that installation next week. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. That's uh, it's a fantastic motivator for me. And also a big shout out to all the developers within the Homebridge community who make these fantastic plugins and give us this experience without shelling that additional money to buy those expensive uh, devices. So until the next time, thank you, ciao, and happy automation.